Welcome to our lectern line. To give us a better feel and better understanding of how to find the slope of a polar function, we're going to do a different example. So here we have the equation r equals the cosine of 2 theta, and we're trying to find the slope, in this case, when the angle is equal to 90 degrees. As before, we find the general equation for dy dx in terms of dy d theta divided by dx d theta, but now we, need to find, now we need to plug in the proper values for r and theta to find the slope. Now since we've only been given the, uh, the slope, uh, not the slope, but the angle, the angle being 90 degrees, we then first must also find the value for r when theta equals 90 degrees. And we do that by plugging that angle back into the original equation. So you can say r when theta is equal to 90 degrees is equal to, then we plug in 90 degrees over there, that's equal to the cosine of 2 times 90 degrees, which would be equal to the cosine of 180 degrees, which is the same as saying the cosine of pi, and that of course is equal to negative 1. So we go back to our graph right here, and the only place where r is equal to negative 1 is right here, which means we're trying to find the slope at this location. Because graphically, we can see that that should be zero at that point. Well, let's see if that's the value we get when we work it out. Now what you're going to do is plug in the values for uh, r and theta, so dy dx, when r is equal to negative 1 and theta is equal to 90 degrees, which is pi over 2. We'll go ahead and put 90 degrees in there. So in other words, that's the same as pi over 2, whichever you prefer. And then we're going to plug that into the equation right there. So in this case, r is negative 1 times the cosine of 90 degrees plus the sine of 90 degrees times dr d theta. So we'll write dr d theta there. Okay. However, what we could also do is instead of writing dr d theta, we could go ahead and find out what dr d theta is in here. So in that case, we can say that dr d theta is equal to the derivative of this. Well, the derivative sign is the cosine, so the derivative of the cosine is the negative sign times the derivative of the angle that would be minus 2 times the sine of 2 theta. So technically, we could then replace dr d theta by what dr d theta is equal to. So we'll do that in just a moment. So we're going to divide this by, in the denominator, we get r, which is negative 1, times the sine, or the negative sine of 90 degrees, so minus the sine of 90 degrees, and that would be plus the cosine of 90 degrees times dr d theta. Oh, that should be a theta here. There we go. Okay, now... Let's simplify it by eliminating anything that automatically goes to zero. The cosine of 90 degrees, that goes to zero, so that disappears. Here again, the cosine of 90 degrees, that goes to zero, which leaves us with, this is equal to, the sine of 90, which is 1, times dr d theta. So let's go ahead and plug that in. That's a minus 2 times the sine of 2 theta divided by... Uh, let's see here, that would be uh, minus times the minus, that's plus, that would be the sine of 90 degrees. Well, the sine of 90 degrees, that's 1, we don't need to write that down anymore. So here, the sine of 90 is equal to 1 times uh, minus times the minus, that would be plus 1. And at this point, let's see here, uh, let's simplify this even more by again plugging in the value for theta, theta being 90 degrees. So that would be uh, minus 2 times the sine of 180 degrees, which is equal to sine of 180, that's equal to 0. So again, that would be 0, just as we expected. Now, of course, technical detail here, I shouldn't really write the sine of 2 theta when I'm already indicating that I'm going to replace every theta by 90 degrees. So instead of that, I'll go ahead and go write 180 degrees so we don't violate the principles of mathematics here. So anyway, when we evaluate our general equation for the derivative dy dx, we go ahead and plug in for every r a negative 1, because that's what we get when we plug in theta in our original function. We plug in for every theta 90 degrees, and for every dr d theta, we substitute that by what the derivative is, 
of the function r with respect to theta, which is minus 2 times the sine of 2 theta, then of course we plug that in for dr d theta, and instead of theta we write 90 degrees and evaluate the derivative that way. And that's how we find the derivative of a polar equation when we're given the angle, or in the previous example, when we're given the value for r. But in either case, if they give you the value for r, you'll have to find the value for theta. If they give you the value for theta, you will have to find the corresponding value of r. And if the derivative dr d theta survives in your equation, you also need to then plug in your dr d theta with the angle evaluated at the proper value. And that's how you find the derivative of a polar function.